Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and we are going live for the second time today, yay! All right, so what we are doing now is our beautiful little pickup truck for USA, and let me show you the awesome model I have here. So we have a cute little puppy dog on a USA pickup truck and a flag and fireworks in the sky. All right, so very fun. All right, lots of fun techniques to share with y'all, share with y'all today too. All right, now let me talk about all the awesome tools we have. So we have templates. So this makes it very easy to trace around. These come with your little packets. We have the cute little doggy and the flag and then also the pickup truck. All right, and then it comes with your canvas and then your brush sets and then also paints. All right, so everything that you need, and we got all our supplies out ready to go. Now, now, I went ahead and did my trace early, and for beginners, I always recommend using a pencil first with all of your templates, and then I like to use a Sharpie to go ahead and firm that up so that I can see it really well and I don't lose it, because um, it will bleed through the paint a little bit. But since I know this hard line always stays uh, throughout the painting, um, then I'm okay with that. It actually works in my favor. All right, so that's my first step. Got all that ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and start with the red first and the biggest brush. So I've got my mama brush here and then just some red paint to start with. And I'll just go ahead and load it up. I'm gonna make sure we have lots of paint on the flat side of the brush. And to get really good application over the surface of the canvas, I'm going to go ahead and hold the brush over to the side parallel to the canvas. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that beginners a lot will hold the brush more like a pencil. So I'm gonna show you the difference because if you hold it like a pencil, what it does is it really thins out the paint. It gives you a heavier hand, a lot more pressure. You'll see a lot of brush strokes and it's also going to take this color to more of like a hot pink color. So in order to get a more vibrant opaque coat of red over the top first again make sure you got that nice layer of paint on top of the brush and then hold the brush parallel to the canvas and then you'll lay that on the side and that will give you really good coverage so i'm going to push all this into this surface area here and then red is my lightest color and I'll be going into a lot of black in the background. So with that particular color scheme, you can go out of bounds a little bit. So if you happen to accidentally go outside of that line, don't worry about that because that's all going to be black on the outside. Hello, Sean. <laughs> Welcome back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with this red. Keep putting this in. Now sometimes we do have to turn that brush more like a pencil to actually, hello Kathy. <laughs> so sometimes you're getting around a little corner there and it is a little hard to actually keep holding it completely flat. I totally get that. So yeah, sometimes you do have to go ahead and turn it a little bit, but then you can just follow up with that little nuance of just turning it back over to the flat side and then that'll help you get that really good coverage over the top. So I've got red all the way around here. I've also got red in the center of my tire too. So I wanna make sure and do that as well. Let's go ahead and get that. I don't wanna forget that little guy right there. See, so that's a perfect example of when I do have to kind of turn it like this and hold it more like a pencil, but then I'll follow up with just a light stroke just right over the top to help bring back in that color. Now, when I do these little circles, I actually just hold the brush right in the center and then I'll just twist that brush into a circular pattern and it will make those bristles kind of flare out into that circular pattern there. So that's really helpful. Then I need to go ahead and make sure that I have a thicker coat of red over the top. So then I'll sort of feather that back out with just a light hand 
and a little bit of that flat side of the brush there over the top. And then in here, this is kind of a little area here too. So again, it helps to make the brush a little bit smaller. So I have to hold it more like this to begin with to get into those little areas. And then just lightly hold it just right over to the side to help get that really good coverage in over the top. Continue filling all this in. And then here. And to me, Mama Brush with the longer line edge is the easiest to use in these longer lines here. But you can see how I kind of had to dig into the paint a little bit at that angle. So I need to come back in and just lightly hit it over the top with the side of the brush. So I'll come back in and do that just really quick here to get good coverage over the surface and just make your strokes just really short. So you just wanna barely cover back over the top. Yay! Okay, so we have all of our red done on our truck. All right, now let's do the little stripes here on the flag. All right, so I'm going to start at the top here, and I'll just work this in. Mava brush is still the great choice here. So you can just kind of turn that brush over to the side. And then just pull it across. I'll do one more here. And you can see I got a little oopsie over beyond the line and that's okay because we're going to firm that up with black later. And then I have a little bit of red happening there in the middle of the heart, so I will switch brushes to something quite a bit smaller. And we have a lot of curves happening with the heart too, so I'm going to need my little bit brush. I'll do a quick little twist here into the paint. And this will help me get around those little curves. I've got my little pinky trick using that again to where I hold my hand steady. And then I just lightly kind of feather this out. Let the side of the brush do the work for you. And I'm still seeing a lot of brush strokes in there, so I try to go a little bit bigger. So I will move on up to a little buddy brush here. So it's a little tiny flat. Still small enough to get into the shape, but big enough to where I can kind of feather out so many of those brush strokes. So now that's a bit smoothed out, but still good coverage over the surface. All right, so I have all of our lovely red done. Wait, except for, I want my collar to be red too, so I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, so I've got my little bit and some red, and I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and this little collar here. Awesome. All right, so next we will do a really pretty cobalt blue. All right, so here's my cobalt blue and I will actually push in just a teeny, teeny, tiny amount of white into this. That'll help it cover better, but I don't, I don't change it too much. So it just barely lightens it. But that little bit of white pigment will help the blue just really cover better over the surface. So then I will take this over the top here. And then what's nice about 
this is even if you do get a little bit of a mix with the red happening in the blue, it's not it's not that bad because it'll actually just take it to a slight hint of purple. So which is actually kind of pretty. So but I am going to still try to be careful here. Use a little buddy and go ahead and just push all the way around into that shape. And then if you still see some brush strokes and just kind of load it back up with paint here and then just go ahead and lightly feather this out. So that'll give you that really nice coverage over the top. All right, we've got Sean, Kathy, Audrey, yay. There may be more people I can't see, I'm so sorry, but hello everybody. All right, now we need to go ahead and work in a little bit of this cobalt blue in the flag here. So I will go ahead and position that in place. Audrey, I saw your lovely hair post the other day with the T's and the big giant hair. <laughs> I may have to start doing that. <laughs> My mom used to do that all the time. Well, actually, she still does a little bit, but just not, not quite as big as she used to do when she was really young. So you'll have to tell me if they're bringing that back, that style. I could actually use it. I could use a little bit more body up top. So they are bringing back the tees and I'm all for it. All right, so we have our beautiful cobalt blue here over the top. Lovely. And again, if you see a little bit of transparency happening, then you know, you can just kind of turn that brush just slightly over to the side kind of feather in a little bit more paint to get that nice amount of coverage over the top. All right, and then the white stripes, I'll just let the white of my canvas be my white. So that works perfectly because this canvas is already painted and primed white. So that's beautiful. That just saved me a step. So that's awesome. All right, now I will do my really pretty little puppy dog color. And so I'm just doing a classic kind of like gold lab look here. I guess really I could do my dog's color too. My dog is gray, so that would also be pretty. But all right, we've got gold and white. You can add a little bit of warmth with that bright yellow in there too. I just found out what dog, we have not known my dog for a long time because she was a rescue and we definitely found her breed. She is called a Blue Lacey. And it turns out that is the official dog breed of Texas. But she looks identical. She has everything that they have, like a little white spot in front and their longer nose, long thin nose and little grasshopper legs. And <laughs> anyway, it's kind of funny, but I'd never heard of that breed before, but that turns out that's what we have. But we'll go ahead and do this bright. This is a really pretty color, so I like the contrast of it in the sky. So we'll do a really pretty gold lap. I had a gold lap as a child too, so. But you can certainly change this color. The only thing that gets tricky is if you wanna do a black dog against the black sky. And then we need to think about maybe a different color sky to have contrast on that. So I would almost go with, well, there's lots, I don't know. You could go with like a, just a sky blue. All right, so we're just finishing up these little quick touches of painting in the color of the dog. And again, this color mix here is a beautiful gold and a little bit of this bright yellow and a little bit of white. 
And I am being really careful to not push into that red on the collar because it's still wet. I don't want that to mix in. Okay, so we have our beautiful little doggy now. And if you see a little bit of transparency, just remember to kind of add an extra little load of paint on one side and just kind of lightly hold that brush over to the side and that will give you a nice thick coat there over the surface. All right, and now, you know what, let's see, I wanna, I'm gonna do that. You can leave the white light just white, but I'll, I'll just do a little hue of gold here too. I think that's kind of fun. It's my little headlight, a little gold there. All right, so now we have a whole bunch of black to put in. I will start up at the top um, because we have fireworks to put in. So then that will give me plenty of dry time so that by the time I get down here to the bottom, hopefully this will be pretty well set up at the top here. And the sky is just pure black, so there's no mixing on this. Makes it super easy. All right, so here is my big brush. I'm gonna go ahead and use my big daddy here. Help me save a little bit of time. And by the way, I won't worry about doing the flag hole here until I'm completely done because I was, I'll end up just having to completely cover over it, so. And then when I do my cutting work, I do have to be careful. Uh, when I do my line edge, make sure that the brush is very thin. That'll help you get in and around these straight lines. Also, the longer line of the brush, the better. To me, it's a lot easier to do with a really long brush, long line. So the bigger the brush, the better on that. So go ahead and work those in first. Do that cut in work. And then make sure it's really tiny in here because I want to make sure I do not cut into the top of this head. I cut that real close. <laughs> so be careful on that one. You might actually switch over to your little buddy brush for that one just to be safe, better safe than sorry. Now I have to kind of pull out from that little line, but I do want to be careful because I don't want to interrupt the space of the flag with any of the black. So I'll get just as close to it as I can and then I'll just pull away from that shape to help fill in all that black. And then this is really easy to fill in here because just lots of big wide open space here. So you can kind of relax a little bit when you're in this larger area. And then this is pretty easy to work into. All right, now I don't want, this is right here is where my fireworks will go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one more scrape all the way across just so I don't want too heavy. I don't want the paint to be too heavy in there because I want that to start setting up and drying. So I'm gonna smooth that out. And then as we continue to work in here to the rest of it, then it will be setting up and drying so that when we come back and do our fireworks, then hopefully it'll be mostly dry. All right, some of this, I'll probably have to switch to a smaller brush, definitely in here, because it's going to get tight in here around the puppy dog. So I try to do as much as I can with the big brush, but you can tell how it's, it's gonna get tricky. So I'm gonna have to switch pretty quick. But I got pretty close, so I'll come back and get that here in a second. And then in terms of the edges of your painting, if you want, you can certainly paint all those edges it is an optional step. If you put it in a frame, you don't even have to worry about it. Um, but if you leave it as is and just wanna hang it as is on the wall, then of course you will want to extend this black color or whatever your background color is over to the edges. 
And so you can do all three edges pretty easily, and then you'll want to make sure everything sets up and dries completely before you actually turn it and do the very bottom. And I haven't forgotten about this little part in here too, but I'll get that completely here in a second because bigger, uh, little brush, little brush on that one. All right, so I'm gonna finish up here. We're almost done. Let's very carefully go around that. All right, this gets to be pretty curvy in here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch. We're down to details. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush. And Little Buddy is a great tool for this. So I'll go ahead and take Little Buddy, push into the black paint, and just go around all these little curves here. And then now I'll kind of feather out And then on the inside of this window, I can just go ahead and hold it just like you'd hold a pencil to go ahead and work into that little shape there. And then hold the line edge here. And then just kind of feather it out just like this. be really tiny in here so this little guy very helpful and I've got a thin little line in there for that little ear so I'm going to go ahead and you caught that or not, but tiny little line in there. So I had the line edge of the brush work for me. And I just did one more little reinforcement of that tiny line that came up into that ear. Okay, so we've got all of our beautiful black done. I can also kind of firm up with a little bit of a black line coming through here on the flag. I actually want to switch to a bigger brush because it is super helpful to have a longer line edge. Not too big and overpowering, but my mama brush works nicely. And so I'll load into the black paint. Make sure you apply really firm pressure so you want that really nice thin line edge. And then this is what we can use to go ahead and do our line edge here alongside that. That'll just help reinforce those stripes. One more there. And that one's done, so now we just need one more line right through there. All right, perfect. Awesome. Okay, so great progress. Now we are going to do our fireworks. All right, so when you break these down, it's just a really simple step that happens to make them work out. So we're going to start with a really bright light one to begin with, and then we'll go over and do the blue one next. All right, so I've got my yellows and my reds to begin with. All right, so mine's still a little bit tacky, so definitely when you're working at home, make sure that this is completely dry because it just makes it so much easier. I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful and light-handed and keep my paint really resting on the surface, which is something you really normally shouldn't have to worry about. If you just let it set up and dry, that's all you need to do. All right, I've got my little buddy brush and I've got some bright lemon yellow. 
little touch of gold and a little touch of white. We're gonna keep that really light. And then I'm going to make a little circle right here. And it, see, it picked up a little bit of that black. So I'm going to wipe this off real quick, clean it off, because I don't want to keep dragging that into it. And then I'll just go ahead and get a little bit more of that gold and then just lightly apply this over the surface so that, that stays very, very bright. All right, so that's fine. We've got our center. All right, then next step what I will do is I will start to do the little white rays of light that come out from the firework. So Little Buddy brush is still a great tool here. I will use just pure white paint. And it almost feels like you make like little sun rays. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply some firm pressure. Make sure you keep the end nice and thin there. And then I just go ahead and take this all the way around. Now see, I'm picking up black wet paint. Again, you don't wanna you don't wanna do that at home. You just wanna let it set up and dry. So I have to kind of keep dragging my brush and cleaning a little bit every time. And then to make sure I've got some good symmetry in the beginning, I actually just start working this all the way around. So I did a top and bottom side to side, and then I start working in around in diagonals. So that sets up the structure of it nicely to where it's nice and balanced. And then I'll just keep working into that in between all of those. And I'll take that all the way around. That way you don't get to be too heavy on one side or another. And then something else I'll start to do here in a little bit is I actually start to stagger the actual lengths of the light rays that come out. So I want some to be a little bit shorter than others and then some to be a little bit longer. That will create some magic with the firework here in just a, a moment, especially when we start to place a little bright end circles on there, which is part of the technique. So again, just Tiny little white lines. And I'm keeping some of them really short while some of them are really long. All right, we're almost done. Lots of fullness on this though. All right, so we have a great foundation. Let me scoot this in. Got a little out of frame there. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to do little circles all the way around. So I'm gonna do my fancy little trick where I do circles on the end of the brush. And I will use my big daddy brush to do this. And the first color that I will use will be a little bit of that really pretty bright yellow. So I'll take the end of the brush and just dip right into that yellow paint. Ta-da! All right, and then I will just go ahead and place that down on the surface. And see, I will vary this. Remember how I told you I had some coming in shorter and then longer? So now I've got some good variety happening. So I'll place one of these little circles on the end of each one of those little rays. And because we varied their distance a little bit, it varies where these start to sparkle out on the ends, which makes for a really nice abstracted effect for our little fireworks here. Yeah, take some out. See, one goes way back in, one goes out, one goes in. I still see? Okay, good. I was gonna say, y'all yell if you can't see. <laughs> Just type, type yell. Hey, we can't see. That looks like I'm keeping my head out of the way. 
All right, so I'll continue just stagger this. All right, very nice. So lots of fun there. You can just leave it just like it is. I'm gonna add one more detail just to have a little bit more fullness happening here with the firework. So just a teeny amount of red. So again, end brush here, push down into the red. And I want a little bit of this happening in the center. So I'll for sure do a little row of circles all the way around on the inside and then kind of randomly I'll dot out a few more that extend a little bit farther than the other ones. So about every other one I'll do a second dot that comes out a little bit brighter and extended out into that firework explosion. Yay, okay, so that is our beautiful little firework. All right, now we're going to do a different color. Oh, yay, okay, I'm just now reading. Yes, and actually we, vet, we do painting classes for vets. This can be very therapeutic too. <laughs> They always, they resist it at first though. A lot of men do, they, they think that they're, not, that they're not going to enjoy it, which I find to be odd because so many of our famous artists are men and then we try to get them to paint and they just, they usually, um, again, they usually have a little bit of resistance to it at first and then they figure out that it's really quite enjoyable and relaxing. And I don't know if you know this, but Bob Ross was, uh, you know, the famous painter Bob Ross, he was actually, I think a Marine. And so he found that painting was very relaxing and, and helped him really calm down. So pass that on. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to do a little bit of our blue for our blue firework here. And I've got my cobalt blue with a little bit of white. That will be my center. All right, so again, cobalt blue, a little bit of white. And I'll do a little half circle right up through here. A little half circle. That will be my center. Basically kind of representing the center of the firework here. Yeah, I think you'd like it too. And then I will do little uh, rays of blue. A little bit lighter this time, so I'll add a little bit more white. This white's a little bit set up. I need a one that's a little more wet here. Acrylic paint uh, does set up and dry pretty quickly. I think I've had this one out of my counter for a little bit too long. All right, so now I've got a really pretty light blue. Check my edge, make sure it's nice and thin on the end there. And then I will do little rays. A blue light that come out. So it's a lot like making a little sun ray effect. That's kind of what it looks like to begin with. And again, stagger the lengths of these a little bit. We want some to be short and some to be longer than others. And I will avoid the shape here of the flag. I wanna go ahead and just come in and around it, but I don't wanna actually overlap it because they are basically off in the distance. And I need to kind of bring in a little bit more of that staggered effect of longer Coming in here. All right, so I feel like I'm good on the thickness of those rays that are coming out now. And then I will come back in with my little trick with the circles, but with just white. And so here I've got the end of the brush and I'll push into the white paint. See how it's going to make a circle. And I do some on the inside. and then I'll do some on the outside. And remember to kind of stagger these a little bit. So you basically want to position it at the very end of each ray of blue light. 
So that's why we've got some coming in higher than others. But that kind of uh, helps out with that illusion of that explosion happening. Beautiful. And then I can also add just a tiny little touch of the red happening in the center as well. I want to use a smaller brush handle here and I'll go ahead and dip into the red. There it is. And I'll add just a little touch of that coming into the center part of the explosion that's happening. And take that all the way around. And of course, every second dot here, I'll go ahead and bring that red down for one more dot. Just kind of adds a little bit of variety with the color coming out. All right. Now we need to do our little reference here for our flag pole that's basically coming down into the pickup truck. So then I will do, let's see here, I want a little buddy brush. What is that right here? Let's do some gold and a little bit of white for that. I've got that right over here. So a little bit of white, a little bit of gold. And you can certainly do this with a pencil and a ruler to begin with if you want. So let's see, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do a quick little reference here. And again, my black's still a little bit wet, so it's digging into that paint. That's why I'm losing my line a little bit. So to help compensate for that, I'm just going to tap the white over the surface here. But ideally, you should just let your paint set up and dry. And then you won't have to worry about that. All right, let's see. I need a little bit. There is one. All right, so we have our cute little line there. So now you can see the reference of it connecting that flag uh, to the truck there. And then we'll also come back in with a light little series of dots and white sketch marks that will kind of help make that truck sort of pop out to the front. This is an optional step, but it is a fun step. That definitely kind of makes it, gives it a fun little style to it. And I'm going to use like a medium sized brush here for that circle. So I'll use my mama brush and I'll just dip right into this white paint. That's what I'll start with. So that gives me my framework here. But I just kind of take this and dot all the way around the truck. This can look a little scary at first, but I promise it works out. So I'll put these all the way around here. And then this is such a fantastic trick because it gives you that perfect little circle every single time. Makes it really easy and fun. Anytime you wanna do a polka dot pattern, this is really the way to go. So we'll be doing this all the way around here. Kind of almost makes it look like one of those um, old fashioned signs too, you know, that has the big bulb lights happening in it. So it's fun. All right. So, and then if you want, you can do some on the outer edges of the flag. You can help kind of make that flag pop forward a little bit too. I 
watch out for the top of the dog head there. Oops, that one got really small. So you can always, if one does happen to get a little bit smaller, you can always just pop right back up over the top of it. And you'll be fine. And I've got so many dots coming in from the firework. I'm going to leave the rest of it alone because it's going to get crazy. So I'll leave that alone and I'll just kind of line it out delicately. Now I will come back in with my little buddy brush and I've got my white paint here. So I'll go ahead and push right back into this. And this will help give me a nice little thin line. Now, if I do run into an area that has too much of a curve to it, I'll probably have to switch over to my little bit brush. But here's my little buddy, and you can see how it's super thin on the edge. And so I can go ahead and use this to just make little tiny dashes. And keep checking it, because it can get filled up with paint your brush and it can become too thick and then your line can be too thick. So you wanna make sure to keep an eye on that, make sure it doesn't get too thick. Now, if you are seated painting, of course, you can kind of rest your hand on something or you can kind of see how I'm bracing my hand with one other hand and that can help stabilize my hand while I do these little tiny moves here. And the reason why I also enjoy using a brush with this little tiny line edge is it does help keep the movement of it very straight. If you have your little bit brush, which comes to a point, the hand tends to wiggle and then each line gets a little wiggly. So this helps keep these a little bit straighter. To me, it's a lot easier to use. All right, then I'll go ahead and make a little line in through here. Keep that one really thin up above the little dog head there. See, I let those little white dots of the firework kind of work for me. And I just kind of worked into them with one more little reference of a sketch of a line in there. And then I'll do the same thing in here. All right. Super awesome. Okay. Now I can do, oh, I can do a little bit in here, just a little sketch of a line. I feel like it's a little too busy to continue on with the dots in here, so I'm just going to do a little sketch of a line here in the center of the track, a little window. And then same thing with the dog. If you want to do a little line around him, now he's super curvy, so we need to go ahead and use our little bit brush, do that little twist into the paint. That'll rotate out to a nice fine point, and then I'll just kind of lightly sketch around him. But see, that little buddy brush could never do that because of that straight line on the edge. But this little tiny point can certainly handle that. So again, just light sketchable line. Be very gentle on this. Very light touch. All right. So we are all good on that. And then I can do, there's a couple of things you can do here. We can write the word USA. So what I recommend on this one, you can do it with black or you can do it with white, but I do recommend using your pencil first, doing a little bit of planning so you know that it fits into the space nicely, but it's pretty easy. So we've got our U and then our S and then our A. All right, and I can see that up close there.
And let's see here. I'm going, since my paint is still wet, I'm gonna go ahead and do black today so that it, because if I were to do it with white paint, I'd be painting just light pink. And so we don't wanna do that. I do need a little bit brush. And then if you're at home and you're doing this and you want the white lettering over the top, uh, just make sure that you let it set up and dry completely and then you would be able to paint white letters right over the top and it would not blend. But right now I've got too much uh, wet red paint and it will most definitely blend at this point and it will turn pink. So I'm going to just do black, which I know will lay on right over the top and not give me any issues with the blend. Sweet. All right, so I've got my USA. Let's see, there was something else I thought maybe I was going to do. Oh, uh, option of little white stars. Okay, so definitely use your pencil on this one too. And I make little white stars here and here, and I actually just go old school, like grade school stars. So let me show you what I do here. I'm gonna show you with a Sharpie first. But we all know what this looks like. So you take your pencil and you just do that. And they certainly don't have to be very perfect at all. But I take my pencil and I just make those. So I will do that with a pencil here first because I need to make them really tiny and I can brace my hand here. These are little tiny baby stars. Let's do another one here. Barely see that. All right, and then I need a super tiny little brush. I think this will work, actually. Oh, I like that one. See that? Ooh, that's super tiny, I like that. Okay, um, let's see. All right, let's get some white. Super tiny. And then I use my pinky to brace and you can just basically do that same stroke that you just did. So it's almost like you start off with a little triangle and then you go back up and then cross and then back down. And then you just fill it in. So it's just like what we did in grade school. So again, start off with that little triangle and then come back up with a diagonal stroke and then take it across and then come back down. And there's our two little cute stars. So cute. All right, you can also add in little hints of sketches in your track too. And just keep this really light and thin, just thin lines, small brush. So I'm gonna use my little bit brush again here. Make sure I don't have any excess water in there because you don't want any water runs. It'll look like mascara runs. They can also erase through paint. But so I'll keep this really thin. So that same little tiny brush, we're gonna dip into the black. And then I'll just kind of lightly do a little bit of a sketch here. And that's certainly optional. You don't have to go to that extra detail if you don't want it. It's just a, a nice little extra line. All right. 
Man, I think we're done. This is awesome. Okay, so we have done our beautiful patriotic pickup truck with our cute little dog and our American flag and our fireworks. And then the only thing left to do is to sign your masterpiece. So I will come back in with my smallest brush here and I'll just go ahead and do it in the traditional place on this one. It works out really well with the composition. So come in with a little bit of white, small brush and I'll just do a little sign right here. Paint pens are also a good tool for this. I'm actually looking for, I'm shopping around for good paint pens right now. I wanna make sure that I find the best one. If I'm going to start teaching with them, I need to find really good ones, but I do have some for sale on my website right now, and they're pretty good, but I'm in pursuit. Anybody has any good recommendations? But I'm gonna be trying some of the top ones. I'm looking at all these really phenomenal artists that do nothing but paint pen work and really elaborate designs. And I notice they use a different brand than I do and I'm betting that their brand's probably a lot better than mine. So we're gonna experiment with some of that too. All right, so here we go. We have our beautiful truck done. Yay! All right, so again, all the supplies that you need for this are going to be on our website. And we have all the cute little templates for you. I think I lost my puppy dog. Oh wait, here he is. He's so cute. Here's our little puppy dog. Got a truck, makes it easy. And of course the flag. All right, all the brushes, paint, canvas, all that stuff, all at tipsyartist.com, but yay. All right, and I think we are painting. I have, I'm like almost every day uh, this week. So I will see you again tomorrow at noon. I can't remember what I'm painting, but I'll send lots of reminders through my Instagram story and everything, which will come through my, my Facebook story too. But yeah, look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow at noon and y'all have a beautiful rest of the day.